Hello everybody, welcome to this quick guide on the Superposition Benchmark by Unigen. If you are unaware, the Unigen Superposition Benchmark came uh, online around two months ago and is the third benchmark released by Unigen so far. First one being uh, Unigen Heaven, next one Unigen Valley, and now we have Unigen Superposition. So in this quick guide, I'll be taking a quick look at the f main functions of the benchmark and also the graphics quality presets of the benchmark itself. So when you first open Superposition, you will see three tabs uh, right located right here. They are Benchmark, Game, and Virtual Reality. So the first one is Benchmark, and that is pretty self-explanatory. It When you click Run down here, after you selected the graphics preset you so desire to use, it is going to run a three-minute benchmark on your GPU, and once it's done with that benchmark, it is going to give you your overall graphics score, which you can save to a folder and slash or... Uh, save it to their um, to Unigen's website. Now, uh, the next one is called Game. <coughs> Excuse me. Game is something that hasn't been done before in Unigen's previous benchmarks, which were Valley and Heaven. Now, while in the Valley and Heaven benchmarks, you could go into first-person view and look around the maps. Superposition is the first benchmark that actually has a mini puzzle involved, or rather a mini game included. So this puzzle is uh, a puzzle on superposition. And if you don't know what superposition means, superposition is something to do with anti-gravity and um, anti-gravity and physics or something like that. I don't know fully what it means, but it's something to do with science and physics stuff like that. So you can go in and solve that um, if you want. And then next we have virtual reality. Now, virtual reality is the exact same thing as game, but instead it'll run the game in virtual reality mode. But unfortunately, you have to pay, uh, you have to upgrade to at least the advanced edition to get virtual reality unlocked. So now on to graphics presets. Now, the game and benchmark tabs have the exact same graphics presets, so I'm not going to go through the game graphics presets. I'll just focus on this one since they are both the same. So, when you click the menu for presets, you'll see several options. First one is custom, next is 720p low, 1080p medium, high, extreme, 4K, and 8K optimized. Now, 1080p low is great for cards that are low demanding like the RX 550, 60, RX 550, RX 560, 570, or not necessarily the 570, but lower cards like that, and like the 1050. 1080p medium settings is great for cards like the GTX 1050 Ti, uh, GTX 960, RX 390X, or rather RX 380, stuff like that, a little bit older. And then the 1080p high settings is where stuff really gets demanding. You will want at least a GTX uh, 1060 or higher, a RX 580 or 480 or higher, or something along those lines. The 1080p extreme is incredibly demanding. It is crazy how demanding this preset is. You basically need a 1080, a 1080 Ti, or a Titan XP, or probably AMD's upcoming Vega GPUs to run this preset effectively. Now to put it in perspective, the 1080p extreme preset run with a GTX 1080 Ti cannot even reach a maximum of 50 frames per second. That is how uh, demanding this preset is. Now, I want to clear something up with the 4K and 8K optimized settings. These specific settings are optimized settings. They are not they are not running the basically they're not running the ex extreme graphics detail. So what I mean is when Unigen set these optimizations up, they optimized them. They didn't add graphics detail, meaning that they dialed some of the graphics settings down so you can run the 4K and 8K benchmarks on GPUs without getting super, super low frames. So in the custom settings, you can see all the graphics uh, presets and quality settings. You can customize all of them to your wish wishes. So first off, we have the Graphics API, so you can switch between OpenGL and DirectX. Now generally you want to stay with DirectX, but I've tested both, and both yield the same frame rate, so that's totally up to you. I recommend DirectX still, because that's the more popular API overall. Next we have Full Screen, so you can either disable Full Screen, 
enable full screen or run it in a borderless window. So for those who don't know, borderless window basically is going to run the game in a window but not show the uh, windows borders, specifically like the uh, border with the mi uh, minimize, maximize, and uh, exit buttons. Then next we have the shader quality and texture quality. Now shader quality is the graphics details. So you can choose low, medium, high, 4K or 8K optimized here and choose those uh, and customize those. So what's nice about this is say you don't want to run 1080p extreme but rather want to run 1440p extreme you can just click 4040p and click the extreme settings and you're running 4040p. That's why. That's why you can choose the or that's why you even have a custom preset overall to choose whatever you want. Next you have the texture quality. So we have low, medium, high. Now this is a VRAM dependent uh, setting. Textures are going to yield higher quality pictures and uh, just overall higher quality in the objects in the game itself. But it is usually a VRAM, uh, consumes a lot of VRAM. So you want to make sure you have a lot of VRAM for this benchmark. But if you don't, just choose a lower one like medium or a low and you'll be fine. Next you have depth of field and motion blur. Now these two settings affect um, blurriness in the game, which adds a scenic look to it. So depth of field makes things more blurry when typically they aren't in a game, and then motion blur adds blurriness when you move around, uh, move around the map or move around the room. So that's what those are for. So in the subcategories we have performance, VR ready, and stress. So basically what these are are the first one, performance, is just the standard benchmark. That's the one you're probably going to use the most. It just runs the regular benchmark. VR Ready is going to run the same benchmark, but in VR mode. Now, VR mode will not run in without a VR headset plugged in, just in case you were wondering. I tried it just for fun, and yeah, it didn't run. And by the way, I don't own a VR headset, which is why. And the next is stress. Now, stress is going to loop the benchmark over and over again until you say stop. Or rather, unless you click the um, duration part, if you unlock it and go to the, uh, once you get it and unlock it, if you want to pay for it, you have a duration option that you can choose. Or you can just set it to never and it'll loop forever until you say stop. So the beauty of this is if you want to stress test your GPU, say you're overclocking and you want to stress test it, make sure it's stable. You can loop this over and over again to make sure it's stable. That's what this option is for. Now on to something of a loophole I figured out. You don't need the stress option to loop the stress test, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure if Unigen purposely did this or not, but let me show that uh, to you really quickly. And just to let you know, I'm running a GTX 1060, uh, 6 gigabyte G1 Gaming from Gigabyte, and these are the settings I use if you're curious. So if you're wondering, I am again running a GTX 1060. I have overclocked the core to a 80 megahertz offset and a 500 megahertz offset on the memory. Now I'm going really conservative on this since, uh, if you don't know already, Pascal is very uh, doesn't really overclock that well. And if you use more voltage or rather a overvolt, it doesn't really add an extra clock speed, not a lot of clock speed, not a lot of extra performance. So I've just done a generic overclock or uh, lower overclock for me personally, so I don't have to constantly keep um, making things really stable and stuff like that. And it works really well for now. Anyways, I digress. Going back to the Nugent benchmark. So this is the benchmark itself. So again, this is a game, sort of, so you can still do stuff like, I don't know, yeah, write on stuff and blow uh, shoot darts over there and just stuff like that. Now this all is part of the puzzle, so you're supposed to use all this to solve the puzzle somehow. I'm not sure how. I haven't done it yet, but I'm sure it's pretty interesting. Now to put in perspective how uh, light the high settings are, even though it looks really good, take a look at the right, uh, top right part of the screen. You'll see the triangle section is at f currently 57, uh, 5.7 million. Now. 1080p, or rather the extreme present, will jump that all the way to 10 million in this specific scene. And as so, even though this high settings looks really good, it looks way better in extreme present. So, anyways, 
onto the loophole I mentioned. So all I have to do is, if you're in the game right now, click Escape. Just bring out the mouse cursor, then go up to cinematic mode to the top left, and here I'll remove the OSD really quickly, and click cinematic mode up to the top left. Now again, this will loop the benchmark over and over again, just like as if you were stress testing. So I am not sure if this was meant by Unigen to uh, be in the free version, not sure. Since it's kind of weird that it is, since you're basically cheating. But since it's there, they're cheating themselves, so I don't know. But anyways, that is a quick look of the Unigen Superposition benchmark. Oh, and before I leave, the um, quickly one more thing. So the settings tab down here, if you're just wondering, all this does is adds music and sound. You can turn on and off, tooltips on and off, DPI scaling on and off. Then you can select the folder for your benchmark screenshots. Or you can click that if you forgot where they were. Anyways, I hope this was a good, uh, or rather a very descriptive guide on superposition benchmark. If you have any questions or comments, please feel, uh, feel free to leave them below. Thank you.